Israel retaliated on Rafa, causing at least 35 casualties. This week, the National Assembly will discuss many important issues. Chairman of Gay and Province met with Dungguan city leaders, Guangdong Province, China. Hello, so good to see you again in today's news. I am Huang Yin and here we go the first up of the show. Hours after Hamas announced that they had fired large rockets at Tel Aviv and central Israel for the first time in months, the Israeli military responded with airstrikes on Rafah, killing at least 35 people. The Gaza Ministry of Health reported that at least 35 people were killed, mostly women and children, and dozens were injured. The Israeli military confirmed the attack, stating it targeted a Hamas facility with senior members. In response, senior Hamas official Sami Abu Zuri criticized the attack as a massacre and blamed the US for financially and militarily supporting Israel. The strikes occurred two days after the International Court of Justice ordered Israel to stop military actions in Rafah, where over half of Gaza's 2.3 million people have taken shelter from earlier Israeli attacks this month. Continuing the agenda of the seventh session of 15th National Assembly, during the second week of work from May 27 to 31st, the National Assembly will discuss many important issues. Specifically, during the second week of work, the National Assembly will discuss four draft laws, including amendments to the Social Insurance Law, amendments to the Organization of People's Courts Law, amendments to the Capital Law, and the Law on Defense Industry, Security, and Industrial Encouragement. On May 29, delegates will evaluate the additional results of implementing the Socio-Economic Development Plan and the State Budget for 2023, as well as the progress of the plan for the first months of 2024. Today, the National Assembly will discuss the draft law on social insurance amendment. Also during this working week, the National Assembly will discuss the draft resolution on piloting additional mechanisms and policies for the special development of gay and province. During the ongoing visit to China from May 26 to June 1st, today the Ngi'an Provincial Delegation led by the Chairman of Provincial People's Committee, Mr. Nguyen Duc Chung, just met the leaders of Dongguan City in Kwangtung Province. The Party Secretary of Dongguan City warmly welcomed the Chairman of the People's Committee of Gain Province and the working delegation during their visit to Dongguan City. Recognizing Gay and's potential, natural advantages, and cultural heritage, the party secretary of Dong Quan proposed continued trade and industrial cooperation between the two regions. With over 21,000 businesses and a robust industrial sector, Dong Quan boasts a sizable consumer market. The chairman of Gay and People's Committee commended Dong Quan for its achievements and noted in Gay and's consistent ranking among Vietnam's top 10 provinces attracting significant FDI, largely from Chinese investors. Chairman Nguyen Duc Trang outlined the delegation's main objectives, expanding investment cooperation with Chinese partners, learning from Chinese localities' development experiences, including Dong Quan, and facilitating infrastructure investment in Gay and to attract more Chinese investors. Emphasizing the need for enhanced cooperation, trade, and cultural exchanges, Chairman Nguyen Duc Trung warmly invited Dong Quan's leaders and businesses to visit and collaborate with Gay An in the near future. Upcoming are some updated news. Qatar Airways announced that flight QR-107 encountered turbulence while flying over Turkey. However, the flight still safely landed in Dublin, Ireland. Emergency services, including airport police, fire department and rescue teams, were deployed immediately at the airport. Six passengers and six crew members were injured in the incident. This incident occurred five days after a Singapore Airlines flight encountered severe turbulence, resulting in the death of a 73-year-old passenger and injuring 20 others. According to data from the General Statistics Office, Vietnam's GDP growth in the first quarter of 2024 reached 5.66%. This figure closely aligns with UOB's forecast of 5.5% and marks the highest quarterly growth rate in the past four years. 
Vietnam is the sole representative from Southeast Asia to enter the top 10 developing countries predicted to have the highest growth rates until 2029, with a forecasted growth rate of 6.4% from 2024 to 2029. The IMF predicts Vietnam will experience a period of strong economic growth, becoming one of the fastest growing emerging economies. According to statistics at the end of 2022, bad debts owed by bankrupt or inactive enterprises and enterprises whose owners have absconded amount to over 4 trillion Vietnamese dongs, affecting the entitlements of more than 213,000 workers. They are unable to finalize their social insurance records in order to enroll in new companies and continue contributing, and their retirement, sickness, and maternity benefits are all impacted. Minister Dao Ngoc Dung has proposed using the interest surplus from the Social Insurance Fund to write off the social insurance debts of bankrupt enterprises and those whose owners have absconded in order to resolve the entitlements of over 213,000 workers. Only once this debt is cleared can the workers' entitlements be fully resolved. Now let's move to today's story. With a message, each strand of hair, each strand of love. The hair donation for cancer patients program in the Iron has attracted nearly 1,000 participants and received nearly 700 donated hair pieces. This meaningful gift will help patients feel more positive in their fight against illness, easing their physical pain and reducing the emotional distress and self-consciousness during the treatment. Recently, the Gay and Cancer Hospital collaborated with the Tomorrow is Bright Cancer Patient Support Fund and local hair salons to organize the Donate Hair for Cancer Patients program with the humanitarian message, each strand of hair, a strand of love. Every donated strand of hair would represent the love that people are sending as a gift to cancer patients. The hair donation program attracted a wide range of participants, from recovered cancer patients, to children, to hospital staff and workers at the Ngay and Cancer Hospital. Each donated haircut tells an emotional story and an act of compassion towards patients fighting this formidable disease. Hair loss is an extremely concerning side effect for cancer patients, especially for female patients. We believe that this gift helps patients regain confidence, provides motivation to undergo chemotherapy. Truly, this is a meaningful gift for cancer patients. On this occasion, the program has donated over 70 sets of hair to cancer patients. There have been tears on the faces of the patients when they hold the new hair in their hands. The wigs are not just a material gift, but also a spiritual medicine to encourage the patients. At this moment, I don't know what to say, I'm truly happy, thank you. I'm truly fortunate to receive the hair. Thank you everyone, I'm overjoyed. Those loving messages will be a humane forum, where kind-hearted people always open their hearts to share and empathize with the patients. Life will be full of faith, love and happiness when we share the difficulties and support each other for a brighter tomorrow. The last story descended our program today. Thank you so much for your attention. Goodbye and see you later.